Lab 8 is entitled Light Activated Exhaust Fan. What we're going to take a look at in this experiment is a variety of switching circuits. The first one we're going to take a look at is called the inverter. And suppose that I had a transistor with the following specifications. A base emitter turn on voltage of 0.65, a collector emitter saturation voltage of 0.2, and a beta F of 150. To place the transistor in the saturation, we need to keep the ratio of IC to IB less than beta F. So let's calculate the value of I sub C. Well, it's going to be this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by R sub C. But the output voltage will equal VCE sat if we're saturated. So we have this expression for the collector current. Now if we had a 10 volt power supply and a 1K value for R sub C, we're looking at a collector current around 9.8 milliamps. Now to keep the collector to base current ratio less than beta F, which is 150 in this case, we'd have to have a base current that's greater than 65.3 microamps. And the base current is going to be equal to this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by R sub B. But the voltage here back to ground is just the base emitter turn on voltage. So here's our expression for I sub B. Suppose that VN were a high signal and it would be probably as big as the power supply. Since you usually have one power supply for an entire system. And so we would like this base current to be greater than 65.3 microamps. And so we could solve this equation for R sub B. Bringing R sub B over here would need to be less than the ratio of 10 minus 0.65 divided by 65.3. That's 143k ohms. So we pick something much, much smaller than that. We will definitely force our transistor into saturation. So let's just use a 10k resistor for R sub B. Now suppose that our inverter was hooked up to a capacitive load. And again, we're going to hit it with a, a high signal and a low signal and a high signal and a low signal. Just toggle between the two states of saturation and cutoff. If the transistor is saturated and the voltage across this capacitor is sitting at the saturation voltage of the collector emitter, which is around 0.2 for this particular transistor. Now when you cut off the transistor, we can think of it as an open circuit. And then what we've got is a 10 volt power supply, a resistor, and a capacitor that's sitting at a very low voltage. So it's going to try to charge up to the power supply. Our equivalent circuit, if we were cutting off the transistor, would just be this RC charging circuit. And the general form of a first order differential equation is A plus B times E to the minus T over tau. And if we delay the start of it at some T0, as indicated above up here, then we could put that delay into the T minus T0 term. The value of tau is, is, is Thevenin resistance seen by the capacitance, and of course this is just a Thevenin equivalent circuit looking back from the cap. So, so our, Thevenin, our, our Thevenin in this case is the collector resistor. When t is equal to T0, e to the minus T minus T0 over tau is just equal to e to the 0, which is 1. So that's the value of A plus B. And these are two unknowns that are based on initial conditions and final conditions. So if we take a look as time approaches infinity, or is t much, much greater than t0, then this term drops out. It's a very, very small term that multiplies b, and we're just left with a. So a is equal to vcc, and then a plus b is equal to vce sat, so, so b is equal to vce sat minus vcc. In this case, we have 10 minus 9.8 times e to the minus t minus t0 over tau, and with our value of 1k and 0.1 microfarad, we have a 100 microseconds. And so it takes about five time constants for us to reach steady state. So if we were to draw this here starting out at some initial condition VCE sat, it would take about 500 microseconds for it to get up to roughly VCC, which is in this case 10 volts. Now if you evaluate T at one time constant, you wind up getting E, in other words this term right here, equal to 100 microseconds. You wind up getting E to the minus 1, and that gives you 0.632 times, in this case, VCC. So we're about 63.2% from the final value in one time constant. So there's also a way that we can measure a time constant. Well, besides switching a capacitive load, we could also switch an inductive load. So let's put an inductor in series with the collector resistor. And this is gonna be a read relay when we go to lab and the resistance of the relay is around 550 ohms. Let's again see if when we're saturated what the value of the collector current would be with this lower value of resistance. And so if I had 0.2 volts here and in steady state this inductor is a short and then the current I have in the collector 
would be the current in this 550 ohm resistor, which would be VCC minus the drop across the inductor, which is zero in steady state plus VCE sat. And so with 10 volts and 0.2 and 550 ohms, we're looking at about 17.8 milliamps. Our base current is still what it was in the previous case. And so the ratio of IC to IB is still less than beta F. Now, when VN is equal to zero, we're gonna cut off the transistor. But if we had been in saturation for more than five time constants, the collector current would be around 17.8 milliamps. So all of a sudden now we turn off the base current and we have zero base current. So that current is flowing into an open circuit. But as we talked about in class, there's a breakover voltage associated with the transistor. And so here we're sitting at a saturation at about 17.8 milliamps. And then we literally jump to this point on the curve where the base current is zero but also goes running off to a high value of current. And so this breakover voltage is a really large number for a transistor for the 3904 we'd be using in lab. It's around 40 volts minimum, but can be in the hundreds volt range. We'll see in lab that we create a hundred volt or whatever V sub VC zero is when we switch the transistor off. And so we'll see a spike in voltage and then eventually discharging that transistor, the inductor in the transistor to get back to VCC again. This uh, stress on the transistor can uh, sometimes just destroy it on the first spike, but sometimes it takes many spikes of a constant wearing on the PN junctions. So we need some way to fix this up. And as we talked about in class about using what's called a damping diode, and that's putting a diode across the coil such that when the transistor is saturated, once you have 0.2 volts here, and we have 10 volts here, the voltage across the diode is 0.2 minus 10, so it's cut off. And then when the transistor is going from saturation to cutoff, the current that's flowing in here has a place to go and can discharge through this diode. And when it does that, the diode gets forward biased and the output voltage, instead of shooting up to several hundred volts, is just gonna be around 10.6. Relay we're gonna use in lab is called a read relay. And what it is, it's two metal rods with a coil wrapped around. And when voltage is applied to the coil, which has some inductance and some series resistance, it creates an electromagnet. And that closes the contacts, and we get points A and B shorted together. One of the reasons we use a read relay is that we get an isolation between our switching circuits and the load that we're trying to control. So if we had a very high energy source out here, in this case we're going to be turning a fan on and off, we're able to isolate that from the controlling circuitry. So if something went wrong, we wouldn't melt the electronics here or maybe uh, propose a hazard to the user. We're going to activate this read relay with a switching circuit, initially with, our, uh, with a function generator setting the signal from high to low, but we're actually going to use a photocell as a type of a sensor. There's a whole bunch of different types of devices that are light sensitive, but we're going to use a cadmium sulfide device. The device looks something like this, like a little serpentine pattern. When you look down at it, electronics will use this as a symbol, a resistor with lambda above it. What this does is that when the light intensity is high, we see a low resistance. And when we have darkness, we see a relatively high resistance. What's interesting about the cadmium sulfide photocell is that it, it really matches the human eye in its response to light. So you'll find that these cells are used in autofocus lenses for exposure meters, for contrast controls in televisions, for dimmer switches, flim detectors, and even for street lights. Okay, the concepts that we covered in this lab are the logic inverter, switching resistive capacitive inductive loads, using a damping diode to discharge a coil, using a relay for isolation, phototransistor as a sensor. We're going to show in lab that we can play with a magnet and also force the uh, contacts in the read relay to open and close. We're going to use the times 10 probe because we're going to be creating some pretty large voltages in lab. We don't want to burn out the front end of the oscilloscope. We're also going to use the marker feature on the scope to measure the difference between two points on a trace. And this is lab number eight, a light activated exhaust fan.